Hello, my name is Jason, and I want to share with you today how I've made over $100,000 the last few years doing something that I stumbled upon and by flipping my money. So I take my money, I invest it in something, and then I resell it. And by the way, what's even better than that is I started with just $1,000. With the exception of one time where I only made 80% of my money, I typically make over 100%. All right, real quick before I get too far into this, if you like entrepreneurship, making money, um, personal development, that type of stuff, please do me a favor, click on the subscribe button below, and uh, let's get started. Okay, so Merry Christmas. I started this video a while ago, um, but I just wanted to take some time to finish it up before the new year rolled around. And I wanna share with you how I made $100,000 over the last few years, and hopefully it'll help somebody else um, do the same. So the way this video was made was it was filmed over a few months at different points throughout the process of what I'm going to show you. And so if you see that I'm in a different outfit or a different part of the room or whatever, that's why. But I just wanted to walk you through the process so that it makes sense. So that's what I'm going to do and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so before I start, I want to share a little bit of my story. And as an educator, I don't make a whole lot of money, so I have to find other ways to earn extra money to pay for vacations, pay for trips, pay for cars, pay for raising four children. And so, as many of you know that follow me, I'm a big proponent of network marketing. I don't think there's anything else that offers the leverage for the amount of risk that is involved in network marketing. But I know that's not for everybody. And so, once you start making money in network marketing, you also have to invest that money wisely. So that's what I was looking for. So I stumbled upon this idea of flipping real estate, mainly flipping land. So I was looking for something where I didn't have to put in a whole lot of money for a small return. You know, you, you watch those house flip shows, they put in two, three hundred thousand dollars to make twenty or thirty thousand. I didn't want to do that. And I like the idea of land because there's there's not a lot of competition and you're not doing anything to it. You know, I work a full time job, I don't want to go in and do anything. With land, you're just looking for a deal, you buy the deal, and then you flip it for a profit. So that's what I liked about this business model. So originally I learned about this method um, from a podcast and I kind of reverse engineered it and I wanted to test it without using a lot of money. So I thought, well, I'll learn about it for a year and I'll put some money away to actually try to do a mailing and try to get a deal. So every month I threw $100 into an envelope because I figured I was, gonna have to, I was gonna have to buy envelopes to do a mailing. I was gonna have to buy stamps, you know, it's 50 bucks a pop, $53 a pop for 100, a roll of 100, whatever. So I just kept throwing $100 in that envelope. And then when I got uh, about $1,000 or so, I, I decided to do a mailing. I sent out my first mailing, downloaded a list. I'll show you how to do it. Um, got back requests, got a lot of phone calls. At the time, I was taking phone calls. Now I just have a form on the back of the letter. I took all those phone calls, and then I made offers. And I remember I bought my first property for I think $227 plus closing costs. It came out to about $1,000. And then I listed it, put it up on Zillow or Craigslist. I don't even remember how I sold it. Or no, I sent letters to the neighbors and I ended up selling it for $5,000. And I thought, that is an incredible return. Put in a thousand, get out 5,000. So that, that was incredible to me. And when you look at the mailing plus the cost of acquiring the property, it's about 2000 so I did a little more than doubled my money. And to be honest, I thought it was a one-off. I thought, well, I couldn't, I couldn't reproduce that. So I tried it again, and it worked again. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps of what I did, and then I'll share with you at the end um, the numbers that I've made, and I'll share with you um, where you can, you know, you can always reverse engineer it, but you can also learn how to do it and go faster. I wish I would've um, I've, I've been through a whole lot of courses since then. I wish I would have started with the course and just went really fast right from the beginning. So I'll share that with you and hopefully this is valuable to you. So one of the biggest questions people ask me is how I do my mailing. Um, so I'm going to show you right now what a typical mailing looks like. Once you order envelopes and they come back with pre-printed address labels on them, and you've also ordered pre-printed letters that come back already folded, then you're going to stuff your envelopes, seal them, and put stamps on them. Then you're gonna to go to the county that you wanna do business in, download a list, and this list typically you wanna take out everything that has houses on it, any kind of structure on it. You just want land deals. 
So you're going to look for vacant lots, vacant commercial lots, whatever you want to do. That's what you're going to look for. So you're going to download a specific list and then you're going to scrub that list. If you find an owner owns 19 properties, you only want to mail that owner one time. So you're going to take all those out. So you're only mailing them one time. Once you have that list done, then you go into Word and you create some labels or you, you use your Excel spreadsheet, create some labels and you're going to print out all the labels and you've got all your envelopes already. So then once you have all that set, then one of the most time consuming things is putting the labels on the envelopes and getting the mailing all ready to go. But it's very um, mind numbing activity. So I typically just sit on my couch and watch TV while I do it. It's very easy to do. So this is a typical mailing, all of these envelopes, and I'll put them in there and take them to the uh, post office. And all these envelopes here are also part of the mailing. So that's about 3,500 letters. This is what it looks like all packed up and ready to go. We got one, two, three, and this bag full of envelopes right here. So now I'm going to take it to the post office. All right, time out. I want to put a pause right here. So all that stuffing, my first 10, 15 mailings, um, I did by stuffing envelopes, but I've gotten to the point now where I just upload a list um, to a company and then they do everything the same way. They print the letters, they stuff the envelopes, they put a return address in there, I mean a return envelope in there, and they also put an actual stamp on it and they, they mail it all out. And it actually comes out to a little under a dollar a piece per mailing piece that goes out which is I think I was actually paying more when I was doing it myself and that saves me hours and hours and hours of stuffing so if you're gonna do this I would say do the first couple mailings small mailings yourself once you start getting into the 1,000 2,000 piece uh, my last mailing was 5,000 units at one time and it my wife was stuffing envelopes I was stuffing envelopes my kids were stuffing envelopes um, that's when I decided I need to figure out a way to outsource it. So if you're interested in knowing who I use for my outsourcing, um, you can comment below in the comments, and uh, and I'll I'll get back to you and let you know who I use because I have to I have to look it up. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I wanted to insert that into this video real quick so that you know it is very scalable. You don't have to stuff envelopes the rest of your life. It's been a couple weeks since I sent out my mailing, and the letters that I use have a front and a back. On the back it has a form that people can fill out and send back in if they want an offer and so when those come back in I just start collecting them and these are the ones that came in the first couple weeks so I'm gonna start going through these and I'll create a column in my Excel spreadsheet next to their, all the names and it'll say number one did I get an offer did I get a request for an offer from somebody Number two, do I want to make them an offer? Because every now and then you'll get something back and it'll be, you know, somebody will write, handwrite on their, their form that they send back. I want, you know, 50 grand for this property. And it might only be worth 50 grand, so there's no chance of a profit there. Or I get this a lot. They want 30 grand for a property and it's only worth 10 grand or 15 grand. Now I set one letter aside because it, it was a perfect example of what I was talking about, so I want you to take a look at it, but I don't want to show any personal information, so I've kind of folded it so you can just see the bottom of it. But uh, I'm going to show you how this looks. So if you can see this, it says, please tell us any additional information you think is important. And they wrote, no offer accepted below $35,000. Do not mail lower offers. Well, that's just fine and dandy that you want $35,000 for your property. The problem is when I looked this property up, it was only worth about 15. So, and that's on a good day. So for me to make money, I'm going to have to get it significantly cheaper than 15. So there's no way I can offer them 35,000 or anywhere near it. So in that case, I'll just rather than offend them, send them a nice letter that says, "Hey, we looked at your properties. It doesn't meet our criteria. Have a great day." I, I try to only send out offers once a week when I do this process. Um, that way I can look at everything that comes in I'll look at all these when they came in I'll spend the whole week looking at them and collecting them and then I'll do a mail merge and print and mail everything on one day and then I'll do the same thing the next week until everything starts dying down 
and I've went through all my all the ones that I got back. So typically that's how I do it, and uh, hopefully this is helpful and beneficial to you. All right, so to end the video, last but not least, I wanted to share um, how much I've made over time uh, with all these properties. I think I'm going to title this video something about how I made over $100,000. So that $100,000 is all profit, and it's in the course of probably about 10 or so deals. So I'm just going to go over some numbers and and kind of let you know how it's worked out for me. It may not work out for you if you go down this road. I can't promise you'll make any money. It has to do with work ethic and all that kind of stuff and, you know, just this is the fine print. You may lose all your money. You may make money. It's entrepreneurship 101. So here we go. So the first property that I bought, I owned for two months. And that one I bought for 1000 and sold for about 5000 And I actually don't have that one on here. The second property I bought was... I also owned for two months. I bought it for $3,300.98. And I sold it for eleven thousand four hundred and thirty-five dollars and twelve cents, with a profit of eight thousand one hundred and thirty-four dollars and fourteen cents. Um, so, oh, here's my first property: a thousand and five thousand. I made four thousand, and I'll, I'll go through these and I'll just share how much I made on each one. So, I like to share the time frame so you know how long I held the property, and the prices I'm putting here are the all-in purchase price. Not counting my mailings, but with title company, you know, title insurance, title work, doc stamps, all that kind of stuff. That's my all in. And then the profit is after I got everything out. So it's not how much I sold it for. So if I bought it for a thousand and sold it for five thousand, uh, that first one I did all the, the paperwork myself to learn how to do it. But after that, I used a title company. So, you know, the profit is, is pure profit. There's nothing been. Uh, manipulated on these so the third property I bought I owned for 14 months and I made seven thousand and fifty nine dollars and nineteen cents the next property I owned for six months and I made seven thousand two hundred and sixty four dollars and twenty two cents the next property I owned for nine months and I made fifteen thousand five hundred and sixty five dollars and ninety two cents the next property was my hardest one to sell. I owned it for 17 months. I still didn't lose money. I made $763 off of a $597 investment. The next property I owned for 26 months. Oh, actually that one was longer. And I made $2,830 on it. The next property I bought, I made $22,866. That one I bought with another property and I got that one for $1,000. So that was a 2,192% increase because the owners, they just wanted to get rid of it. Um, the next property I owned for three months. And I made $16,000 on. And the last property that I had, I owned for one month. I bought it and sold it all within 30 days. And I made $16,023 on it. Is that what I read before? The one before it was $16,001. So my total profit on all of those deals, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten properties, I made $100,508.66 profit, which is roughly $10,000 per property. And the I also have the percentages here. The lowest I've made on a property is 80% on my money, and the highest I've made on a property other than that that crazy one that I made 2,000% on is 400% on my money. So, and everything in between. I have 351%, 246%, 155%. Other than that one, I only made 80% on my money. I've almost doubled my money every time. So. If this is something that you're interested in looking at or learning more about, I'll put a link down below. And uh, I've been through a lot of programs, and the link that I put below is the one that I learned the most from, and that's still the system that I use 
they all kind of teach different systems and different ways of doing it. But that's the system that I use. It's working for me. Um, it is an affiliate link, so if you do buy through them, it doesn't change the price or anything, but I get a little bit of a kickback from it. But I won't be promoting it if it wasn't working for me. I got my brother into it now, and um, good luck. If, if you make anything or have any success, please come back, find me, and, and post in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks. Congratulations. You made it through the entire video. So if you'll do me a favor, if you found value in this video, please click on the like button um, and subscribe for future videos. And uh, good luck.